on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I'm just gonna check it is all sorted. Instagram always takes the longest to load. I can see it's already gone live on the other platforms. Hit go live, cool, we are there. I think I just need to um, move it over very slightly to be in view for Instagram. Awesome, so we are going to go through a, select, a selection of exam questions for AQA A-level biology. We are looking at protein synthesis in particular. So I'm gonna go through these questions. You can have a go in the chat box as we go through if you want, or just watch it as a bit of revision, completely up to you. So first one that I have is, describe the loading, unloading, and transport of oxygen by hemoglobin. So I'm gonna split, this is actually five marks. I don't know if you can quite see that down here at the bottom, but it is a five marker. You can bullet point all of your questions for AQA biology. So I do highly recommend it because it makes it so much easier. And this is a five marker. So I already know I'm probably gonna go for something like two marks on loading, two marks on unloading, two marks on transport. I'm gonna start with the loading. So we have to describe how hemoglobin is involved or its role in the loading of oxygen. First thing I'm going to say then is that haemoglobin loads oxygen in areas with a high partial pressure of oxygen. You do have to be that specific and name the gas that it's got a high partial pressure of. The next thing then, so my second point linked to loading is then to describe where actually is that location in the body. And an area in the body that would have a high partial pressure of oxygen would be um, such as, in fact, I'm going to be more specific there instead of saying just such as, because they might not realise it's still part of the same bullet point. So I'm just going to say HB loads oxygen in the alveoli in the lungs. So that is my two marks on loading. Now we need to talk about the transport of oxygen with haemoglobin. And once we have oxygen loaded onto haemoglobin, it then forms oxyhemoglobin. So I'm carrying on from this. So this forms oxy hemoglobin um, and this transports in red blood cells. Then I'm moving on to the unloading point, which is kind of going towards the end part of my transport as well, because it's knowing where is that oxygen going to be unloaded from the um, oxyhemoglobin. So I'm going to say oxygen is unloaded and basically the opposite of here. It's in areas with a low partial pressure of oxygen. And just like I did for this one, I'm going to state what that location would be. So that means oxygen is unloaded at respiring tissues because, or you could say cells, because that is where you would have low partial pressures of oxygen because the oxygen's been used up in respiration. So then I just double check, I've definitely addressed the question. So this bit here, I've talked about loading. This bit here, I've talked about transport. This bit here, I've talked about unloading. And I do have five bullet points for the five marks. You could actually add in another mark if you wanted, because I've only done one on the transport here. So I could have, as an extra mark for the transport, something about cooperative binding. That would be my extra point you could have here. And I did actually see some of you asked at the chat box, wouldn't you mention that? You absolutely could mention that for a mark as well. So I could say um, the binding 
of oxygen makes binding of another oxygen easier. So I could have two points on transport as well. Um, so then the next bits we've got are describe the process of translation in protein synthesis. So translation in protein synthesis. Um, for this one, I would say that mRNA binds to a ribosome. I might as well say at the start codon. Then I'd have that tRNA anticodons line opposites mRNA codons. tRNA brings specific amino acid. Um, then I'd probably go for the idea that amino acids join because we get um, peptide bond forms between two amino acids. Right, we need one more mark, so still need another mark. Oh, that requires energy. So forming peptide bond requires energy from ATP. So that's what I would have for um, that one. So one, two, three, four, five, hit the five marks and we've described those key stages in transcription. Uh, next one we've got, apart from poly polypeptides, name two other molecules that a gene codes for. This is testing your knowledge of the definition of a gene for GCSE. I'm oh, not GCSE, sorry, I might have panicked some people there. A-level, this is testing your knowledge of the definition of a gene for A-level. And for A-level, your definition of a gene is it's a sequence of DNA bases that codes for a polypeptide and functional RNA. They've already said though, you can't talk about peptides. I said, apart from peptides, what else does a gene code for? So it's functional RNA, but what that means is either tRNA, mRNA. I only need to give two, so I don't need to give the third one, but just so you know what the third one would be as an option, R, RNA. So you could have any of those. Then we've got named two molecules ribosomes are made from. So this is a small, small part of the topic for spec, but ribosomes are made up of proteins and R RNA. And complete the table to contrast differences between DNA and, that says RNA, but here it says M, so mRNA. So specifically against mRNA. So I'm going to have deoxyribose. versus ribose as the pentose sugar. Next then, it's going to be, um, let's have thymine as one of those nitrogenous bases versus uracil in mRNA. DNA is double-stranded, whereas mRNA is single-stranded. And I'm gonna go for the fact that DNA is longer because it's all of your genome, whereas mRNA is shorter because, because it's only a copy of a single gene. Right, then we get to the final set of questions. We've got give the definition of a gene. Oh, that's what I was just saying. So for this one, you need to have, it's a 
sequence of DNA bases. So you do need to have sequence DNA bases. That codes for a polypeptide. And functional RNA. Um, someone was asking where you can find these questions. These are actually questions that I've modified. So they are originally based on some AQA questions, but then I've reworded and rephrased them and jiggled them together to fit this topic. So they're not actually available anywhere. But this is being recorded, so you can watch the recording on my Instagram or my YouTube channel. The production of mRNA in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells is different. Describe how it differs. So prokaryotic cells don't have introns. In fact, I'm just going to say prokaryotes, because that kind of covers the DNA. So prokaryotes don't have introns, whereas eukaryotes do have introns. And the link to that is, which are spliced out. So we go from having pre-mRNA to mRNA in eukaryotic organisms only. Okay, last one for today. ATP is used in translation of protein synthesis. Describe what ATP is used for. Whenever you're asked what ATP is used for, always say ATP is hydrolyzed to release energy, unless it's been used for phosphorylation. Um, and then I'm gonna say this energy is used to form peptide bonds between two amino acids. And there we have it. There's a quick little revision session together, quick 20 minutes or 15, 20 minutes going through that topic. I do, if this is your first time of coming across my lives or coming across my channel, I do go live every Thursday at 8 p.m. and we're gonna be doing lots of exam questions now because we're in exam season. So if you have a request, whether it's you want to see GCSE or you want to see year one, year two of A-level or a particular topic, a particular skill, then make sure you comment on this video's recording, which will be on Instagram or YouTube, and tell me what you would like to have next week, which is the 29th of May. So just say 29th of May and just put in your request. And what I tend to base it on is whatever I have the most requests for, commented on the recording, because that's where I can then see it all, because the comments on the lives don't get saved. So it has to be a comment on the recording, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to collate it all to see those. But that is it for today. If you do want more exam questions, I have bundles of them for free on my website. So I have a pack of GCSE questions, which are based on skills. So you could get long answer questions, maths questions, application questions for GCSE for free. You can get the same thing for A-level skills questions, where it is application, critical analysis, long answer questions, comprehension. I forgot what the last one is. Or you can get it by topic for... Um, I think I've got it for GCSE and for A-level as well. Plus I do have mock papers and past papers that I've created for free that you can download from my website. So it's missestrick.co.uk. Click the freebies tab at the top and you'll find all my bundles of exam questions that you can use for revision for free. But that's it for today, everyone. Hope you found it helpful and I will see you very soon. And don't forget, if you do want more help, head over to my YouTube channel, Miss Estrick Biology, where I have the entire GCSE and the entire A-level for AQA, OCR and Cambridge International that goes through all of the information that you need to help you with your exams. But that is it for today and I'll see you next week, everyone.